Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to Edusight Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in food microbiology, we will be talking about preservation of food by the use of radiation. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Dr. Tejpal Deva. Dr. Tejpal Deva is assistant professor in Department of Nutri Nutrition Biology in Central University of Haryana. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you ma'am. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, today I will uh, deliver a lecture on uh, preservation of food by use of radiation. In this lecture, uh, I will explain why food preservation is required and what types of radiation we can use to preserve our food. I will explain different types of radiation energy and their possible interactions with food working of food irradiators which are used at large scale production uh, preservation of foods and benefits drawbacks uh, related to processing of food radiations. Additionally, I will explain the safety, legal and regulatory aspects of irradiated foods. So, uh, my first question is why do we preserve our food? Since our population is growing, Hence, demand for food is increasing day by day. Therefore, it is required that we should preserve our food. The success of Green Revolution has enabled India to produce over 160 million tons of food grains every year. But due to post-harvest losses in food and agricultural commodities in India between 20 to 50 percent, which are worth thousands of crores of rupees. These losses are primarily due to insect infestation, microbiological contamination and physiological changes due to sprouting and ripening. Now what we can achieve in preservation of food? By preserving of our food, we can protect people from microorganisms, insects and other pests. We can extend shelf life and improve long term quality and we can make desirable alteration to food properties. Now what are the common methods available with us to preserve our food? We have several methods to preserve our food. From ancient time we are using drying, fermenting, salting and smoking to preserve our food. Later on we shifted to uh, some, some newer method like freezing, canning, refrigeration, adding of certain preservative, here we can add some chemical preservative, biological and others and we can also use certain pesticide in certain foods. Now we have some newest method and the example of newest method is uh, radiations. So here we using our food, uh, here we using uh, radiations to preserve our food and this method is term food irradiation. In this method, the treatment of foods by subjecting them to a specific doses of radiation for a definite period of time to kill harmful microorganisms, pests, parasites and other organisms to preserve its freshness. This process does not make food radioactive, that is why it is uh, very important to us. And now what are the radiations which can we use to preserve our food? The food technologist classified radiations of the interest in food preservation on the basis of their wavelengths, the shorter wavelength be, being the most harmful to the microorganisms. Based on this observation, the electromagnetic spectrum may be further divided into three types, ionizing radiations ultraviolet rays and microwaves, these radiations can be used to preserve different types of food. First we will start from my ionizing radiations. Ionizing radiations are of wavelength of 200 nanometer or less and are most important and widely used in food industry. Because of their quanta contain high 
enough energy to ionizing molecules in their path. The examples of these ionizing radiations alpha, beta, gamma and x-rays. If we see the comparison between uh, among them, then we can find alpha radiations have poor penetration, hence no importance for this uh, preservation purpose. Beta radiations can penetrate up to 4 to 5 centimeter. That is why used in surface treatment and gamma radiations has excellent penetration and they can penetrate up to 30 to 40 centimeter. That is why, uh, that is why mostly used in food packaging industries. These radiations can destroy microorganisms without raising the temperature of a particular food. That is why this process is termed cold sterilization. Now ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet rays are powerful bactericidal agent in the wavelength between 200 to 290 nanometer. These are non-ionizing radiations and they are easily available, uh, uh, easily absorbed by nucleic acid proteins and leading to photochemical changes and subsequent cell death. The death of microorganisms results from the production of lethal mutations in the nucleic acid which prevent transcription and DNA replication further. Hence, these type of radiations are suitable for surface sanitation of food processing and food packaging section. In this slide, you can also see the interaction of UV rays with the DNA and the DNA become damaged. Next gamma rays. Gamma rays are uncharged electromagnetic radiations emitted from the excited nucleus of radioactive elements such as cobalt 60 and cesium 137. They are produced by the decay of radioactive isotopes which are the cheapest form of radiation for the use in food preservation. Since the source elements are available as byproduct of atomic waste that is why it is considered most cheapest. Gamma rays have excellent penetration power and penetrate almost anything it can penetrate food up to the depth 20 to 40 centimeter that is why it is most commonly used by the food industries and uh, it is considered as effective bactericidal agent. Now X-rays. X-rays are again ionizing radiations and which are produced by bombarding suitable meta target with high velocity electrons and are similar to gamma rays in their behavior. Next microwaves. Microwaves are becoming very popular nowadays. These are electro, uh, these are uh, uh, lies between infrared and radio frequency and has comparatively low quantum energy. Microwaves have specific frequency which is used 915 mega cycles and these radiations indirectly kill the microorganism through the generation of heat that is why most of the industrial process we do not prefer because of heat generation. Now, what can be the unit of radiation energy? The radiation dose or amount of radiation applied for food preservation purpose is expressive, expressive by wrap unit, rad unit or gray unit. Wrap unit is Ronjan equivalent physical. One wrap is equal to absorption of 83 ergs per gram of mat matter. Ergs is the unit of energy where rad unit is the unit measurement of for radiation one rad is equal to absorption of 100 x per gram of matter one kilo rad is equal to 1000 rads and last most commonly used unit is gray unit a newer and recently used radiation unit one gray is equal to 100 rad which is equal to 11 joules per kilogram and 1 kilo gray is equal to uh, 10 raise power 5 rads. Now 
the question is is radiation processing is accepted internationally or nationally the answer is yes at international level the radiation process has been approved by food and agriculture organization fao the world health organization who the international atomic energy agency iaea and the codex alimentarius commission nowadays more than 42 countries have approved this process for the application in more than 100 food items now indian acceptance in 1994 the government of india amended the prevention of food adulteration act 1954 rules and approved irradiation of onion potato and spices for domestic market additional items were also approved in 1998 and 2001 in india bhava atomic research center bark has done extensive research and development work on the preservation of food by radiation the board of radiation and isotope technology BR, brit has established facility for radiation processing of foods at navi mumbai bark has also set up a plant for radiation processing of onion and potatoes at lesal gaon in nasik district of maharashtra the ministry of food processing industries is now encouraging entrepreneurs for setting up of facilities for radiation processing of food in the private sector also and in india we have fssai that is food safety and standards authority of india which is also working in this aspect the food safety and a standard authority of india established under food safety and standard act 2006 the main concern of this uh, organization is to laying down science based standards for articles of food and to regulate their manufacture storage distribution sale and import to ensure availability of safe and wholesome food for human consumption in this slide you can also see the front um, the main page of this website and you can visit uh, this site to see the latest updates and latest rules and regulation adopted by this organization now what are the standards set by fssai for irradiation of foods uh, fssai notification dated uh, 28th april 2016 the fssai has approved to omit the specific labeling requirement as well as the logo for all irradiated foods the proposed amendment is for sub regulation labeling of irradiated foods under the sub category specific requirement restriction on manner of labeling in the food safety and standards uh, that is packaging and labeling rule regulation 2011 it was mandatory for all irradiated foods carry a statement indicating the type of irradiation process the food had undergone all packaged irradiated food had to mention the method used for irradiating food license number of the irradiation unit and the purpose for it which irradiation was used now the question is what type of foods are permitted for the irradiation process irradiation is permitted in many countries for several foods these includes for inhibition of sprouting of potatoes onion garlic mushroom for decontamination of food ingredient spices uh, for example insect disinfection of cereals and grains destruction of parasite in meat inactivation of salmonella in poultry egg shrimps frog legs delay in fruit maturation in strawberries mango papaya and yeast and mold reduction in several foods now the question is how much dose we can use to treat our food this section is very important to understand because if we select wrong dose then the product may damaged or the quality of 
food may uh, destroy it. So, this is again very important. So, the dose selection we have three ranges of doses low doses, medium doses, and high doses. Low doses up to 1 kilogram is used to inhibit sprouting in tuber, bulb, root vegetables, and delay in physiological process like ripening, etcetera, in fruits. Medium doses 1 to 2 kilograms extended shelf life eliminate spoilage and pathogenic organism in a particular food and high doses that is 10 to 50 kilograms for industrial sterilization and decontamination of certain additives or ingredients. Here it is very important to note that certain parasites insects have large amount of DNAs that is why they can readily killed by the low doses of radiation and bacterial cells require more radiation because they have less DNA content and viruses and prions are considered resistant to radiation doses. Now, FSSA recommended classes for food products and dose limits for radiation process. FSSAI divided all food ingredients into 8 classes, class 1 to 8. Different types of foods are mentioned in these classes and their purpose and doses maximum and minimum limits were also mentioned. So, we will start from the class first. So, in this class first, the food items which includes bulbs, stem, root, tubers and rhizomes and the purpose is for inhibiting sprouting process. The doses are 0 0.02 to 0 0.2 kilograms for this purpose. Class 2 for fresh fruits and vegetables which are not included in class 1 and the purpose may be delay for ripening, insect disinfection shelf life extension quarantine application. For the purpose of delay in ripening, the dose limit minimum is 0 0.2 and maximum is 1. For insect disinfestation, 0 0.2 is minimum and 1 is maximum. For shelf life extension, minimum dose is 1.0 and maximum is 2.5. For quarantine application, the minimum dose is 0 0.1 and maximum is again 1, means same dose retained. In class 3, cereals and other products, uh, pulses, nuts, oil seeds, dried fruits and uh, dear products included in this class. Here we have two purpose, one is insect disinfestation and reduction of microbial load. For the purpose of insect disinfestation, the minimum dose is 0 0.25 and maximum is 1.0 kilogram. For the purpose of reduction of microbial load, minimum dose is 1.5 and maximum is 5 kilograms. In class 4, fish aquaculture, seafood and their products which may be fresh or frozen and crustaceans included and purpose is elimination of pathogenic microorganism, shelf life extension, control of human parasites. For the purpose of elimination of pathogenic organism is minimum dose is 1 and maximum dose is 7.0 kilogram. Here it is very important to note that pathogenic organisms are uh, uh, considered most important here because they can cause several diseases when we consume these contaminated product. And for the purpose of shelf life extension, 
the minimum dose is 1.0 and maximum dose is 3.0 kilogram and for control of human parasite again it is a great concern that is 0 0.3 to 2.0 kilograms. For class 5 meat and meat products including poultry which may be fresh or frozen and eggs are included and purpose is again for elimination of pathogenic microorganisms, shelf life extension and control of human parasite. For the purpose of elimination of pathogenic organisms the dose limit 1.0 is minimum and 7 is maximum. maximum for the purpose of shelf life extension minimum 1.0 and maximum is 3.0 and for the purpose of control of human parasite 0 0.3 and maximum is 2.0 kilogram. For the class 6 dry vegetables seasoning spices, condiments, dry herbs and their products, tea, coffee, coca and plant products are included and here purpose is again microbial decontamination and insect disinfestation. For the purpose of microbial decontamination, the minimum dose is 6.0 and maximum is 14.0 kilogram. For the purpose of insect disinfestation minimum dose is 0 0.3 and maximum is 1.0 kilogram. Next class 7 it included dried foods of animal origin and their products. For the purpose of disinfestation, control of molds, elimination of pathogenic microbes, uh, different doses are selected. For example, for insect disinfestation 0 0.3 kilogram is minimum and 1.0 is maximum to control mold population in a particular dried fruit 1.0 is minimum and 3 is maximum and to reduce the pathogenic microorganism means elimination of pathogenic organisms from the dried fruit. To is minimum and 7 kilogram is maximum. And last class 8 where ethnic foods, military rations, space foods, ready to eat, ready to cook or minimally processed foods are included. Purpose is quarantine application, reduction of microbial load and sterilization where in sterilization we completely remove all the microorganisms. For the quarantine application we select 0 0.25 as minimum dose to 1.0 maximum. To reduce microbial load from, uh, load from the food 2.0 is minimum and 10 kg is maximum and to completely remove all the microorganism from uh, that particular food that, co that is called sterilization process where we have to select 5 kilogram as minimum and 25 kilogram as maximum. Now FSSAI recommended doses limit for radiation processing of allied products also. For this purpose, uh, packaging of materials, food additives and health based dietary foods including nutraceuticals. For uh, first packaging of uh, packaging materials for food and allied products, the purpose is microbial decontamination, sterilization where again we completely remove the microorganism. In microbial decontamination, we have to select the dose 5.0 kilogram is minimum and 10 to maximum and for the purpose of sterilization 10 kilogram to 25 kilogram that is maximum dose. For the purpose 
of insect disinfection, microbial decontamination and sterilization in food additives. For insect dis disinfestation, we have to select 0.25 kilogram as minimum, 1 as maximum and for microbial decontamination 5 kilogram as minimum and 10 kilogram as maximum and for sterilization purposes 10 kilogram as minimum and 25 kilograms as maximum. For health foods, dietary foods that includes nutraceuticals and for that purpose we have to select 5 as maximum to 10 kilogram as minimum uh, sorry as maximum and uh, for this uh, on the basis of these recommendations we have to select the dose limits for the radiation processing of allied product that is again very important and we should take care about these. Thank you. Hello friends, in this lecture I will explain the different process which are uh, required to produce irradiated foods will, will be discussed and uh, in this process uh, basically we have three types of radiation process, redapartization, recidation and radiorization. First we will start from redapartization. It means the radiation process bringing about the total destruction of microorganism. Means here we selecting maximum doses of radiations to kill all the microorganisms present in a food and this process is considered equally to the commercial sterility here where we produced heat processed foods and that is why this process is also called radiation sterilization because here we completely remove all the microorganism which are present in the food that is why this process is called radiation sterilization. In this process as I also mentioned that we using high doses that is 30 to 40 kilograms of radiations hence we ensure the trial product for prolonged shelf life. In second that is residation, again it is a radiation process used for the reduction of number of viable non spore forming pathogens which are undetectable by any standard method. This process is equivalent to the pasteurization process where we use to treat our milk product. And in this process, uh, we, we keep the radiation level is about 
slightly low level that is 2.5 to 10 kilograms and third is radiorization process. In this process, uh, the radiation is given to minimize the load of spoilage organisms and that is why they can uh, that is why it is feasible to extending the shelf life of foods and again it is considered equal to pasteurization. In this process, we ensure the enhancement of the keeping quality of a food by causing substantial reduction in the number of viable specific spoilage causing microorganisms. Here it is very important to mention that in this process we kill all the possible disease causing microorganisms which are in their vegetative form. So, this method is suitable for extending shelf life of fresh meat, seafoods, vegetables etc and the dose is selected 0.7 to 2.5 kilo grays. Now, what is the exact processing required for the purpose of food irradiation? Initially, we have to select the food, then we have to clean the food, then we have to pack the food in a particular container or wrapper and then we have to go for heat treatment or blanching and later on we can proceed for irradiation process. But before subjecting the food into irradiation process, we must be consider following factors that are very important. For example, type of organisms which are present in food number of organisms, age of organisms, composition of food, oxygen concentration of food and physical state of food. These parameters are considered very important because on the basis of these parameters we have to select the ranges and uh, the product quality which we uh, uh, produce after the processing. So, in this food irradiation process, uh, as I earlier mentioned that uh, gamma radiations are considered cheapest and safest also. So, uh, we use the gamma radiation processing. So, here the packaged food is exposed to carefully measured amount of intense ionizing radiation that is gamma rays in a special processing room or chamber for a definite period of time. And the food irradiation process uses three types of ionizing radiation sources. We can use cobalt 60 as a gamma source and this source is most widely used due to deeper penetration process. We can also use electron beam generator and we can use x-ray accelerators. So, most of the industries using food irradiators are carefully designed for this process and in the large scale food processing an industrial irradiator used to irradiate food or products where a conveyor automatically moves the food packaged into the processing room for irradiation and it is very important to note that in this process there is a no direct contact of food with the radioactive material. There that, that means, there is no risk of radioactive substances entry into the food. And after complete processing of the radiation of food, the manufacturers have to mention the following information on the wrapper of a food product that the manufacturer has processed this food by irradiated method manufacturer has to mention the date of irradiation, they have to paste the green color standard radura logo of radiation, mention, manufacturer has to mention license number and they have to mention the purpose of irradiation. Now, what are the uh, foods permitted for, for irradiation purposes in India? We have the list. Uh, 
onion is permitted with minimum 0.032 maximum 0 0.09 uh, kilograms for the purpose of sprout inhibition shallots garlic ginger ginger is for 0.032 0.15 sprout for the purpose of sprout inhibition potato with minimum dose 0.062 maximum 0.15 for again for sprout inhibition mango 0 0.0225 to 0.75 for shelf life extension and quarantine treatment process figs dried fruits for 0.25 to 0.75 for insect disinfestation means killing of dis, uh, insects from that particular food for the rice it is 0 0.25 to 1.0 again for dis insect disinfestation and for suji rava and wheat atta is 0 0.25 to 1 again for insect disinfestation for pulses it is 0 0.25 to 1 for dried seafood 0 0.25 to 1 and for fresh seafoods 1.0 as minimum and 3.0 as maximum it is for shelf life extension and reduction of or reduction or removal of the pathogen for the meat and meat product it is 2.5 to 4.0 as maximum kilograms reduction for the purpose of shelf life extension and exclusion of pathogen and for the purpose of frozen seafood irradiation it is uh, 4 to 6 kilograms as maximum to remove disease causing microorganisms and for spices it is 6 to 14 kilograms as maximum for the microbial decontamination process. Now the FSSAI restriction on food irradiation means FSSAI has limited the users or the manufacturers for a particular purpose or a particular food. The restrictions are the dose limit means the doses are restricted for a particular uh, food and the radiation sources are also restricted and the conditions are also specified for each type of categories of food for processing by radiation have to be as the under atomic energy radiation processing of food and allied products rule 2012 so, means these parameters should be according to that rules all radiation processed food will be identifiable so that it is not subjected to re-radiation that is again very important and food will not to be irradiate unless specified in FSSAI regulation. So again it is also important and the personals which is undertaking the radiation process will have minimum qualification and training as prescribed under the atomic energy regulations rules 2012. So these are some important restriction by FSSAI on irradiation of food. Now, the advantages of food irradiations. Now, what are the advantages means what we can gain after irradiating our food. So, simply irradiation is a single process which is, multi, which is having multiple uses means it can be used to inhibit sprouting for onion, tomato, onion, potato, ginger, garlic for quarantine purposes means export import of fruits for insect disinfestation from cereals, pulses, dry fruits for extension of shelf life of chicken, meat and fish and reduce the pathogenic microorganism from spices, flesh foods etc. Now what are the disadvantages of food irradiation process. As of now, we have only some means limited number of disadvantages. 
first disadvantage is this radi food irradiation process is only limited for a particular type of food means limited range of foods are uh, are approved for this purpose it has been observed that some important constituents of foods especially vitamins levels reduced during food processing uh, and for example vitamin e level can be reduced by 25% after irradiation and vitamin c by 5 to 10% but the protein content carbohydrate and fat content remain unchanged and uh, it is very important to mention here that is the radiations are ineffective against viruses and prions and also not affected by the uh, means these organisms are so resistant they are not uh, affected by the approved radiated radiation levels so means uh, the viruses and prions cannot be excluded by this irradiation process from the food and it has been observed that sometimes food irradiation can be deteriorate the organoleptic qualities of foods but it happens only in the condition when we use the excess radiations means we use the beyond the limit of the radiations for a particular production uh, uh, processing purposes and last that is again very important concern that is uh, the because we using here nuclear technology that is a great concern with our environment so this is again disadvantage now we have certain microorganisms that are totally resistant to the radiations so uh, the radiation uh, resistant microorganisms are mostly gram uh, negative and gram positive spore forming bacteria which are present mainly in um, different types of foods specifically uh, sea foods and uh, some organisms like e coli which are highly sensitive but not useful as indicator of fecal contamination in irradiated foods certain gram positive bacteria like staphylococcus aureus micrococcus bacillus and clostridium are more resistant to uh, these radiation treatment and as i also earlier mentioned viruses and prions are extremely resistant to the irradiation process uh, dinococcus radio uh, radiophilus which is a gram positive non spore forming bacteria is mo considered most resistant to radiation and it can survive the radiation level of 15 kg another bacteria dinococcus radiodurans is most well studied and first radio resistant organism isolated it is uh, studied that the mechanism of resistant is attributed by its unusual cell wall composition means absence of tachoic acid in their cell wall content and the presence of outer membrane and pigmentation besides other mechanisms are responsible for resistant to the radiation process radiation treatment now the question is are the radiated foods safe to eat answer is yes based on all the scientific information available there is no health risk associated with the irradiated food such as since uh, the radiate, radiated foods do not come to directly contact with radioactive substances that is why they do not become radioactive so there is no health risk is associated and uh, although we know that no processed food is 100% safe but till date no scientific research have shown the irradiated food cause cancer even if 10 times of higher radiated levels the international agencies like united nations food and agriculture organization and world health organization have reviewed the past 40 year research and concluded that irradiated foods are safe for the consumption the nutritional value of the treated foods has found to comparable favorably with other food 
preservation methods. It means irradiated food are safe up to a certain level, but we should be careful uh, while selecting the dose, time and type of food. Now, what effect comes on food when we irradiate the food? So, irradiation helps us to improve the shelf life of our food, although it can bring some undesirable changes like uh, sometimes undesirable changes means some uh, changes related to organoleptic characters and production of certain free radicals when oxidative conditions is dominating. So, some changes that can be observed like product discoloration, soft softening of tissues in fruits due to degradation of pectin and cellulosic content of a food and development of rancidity in high fat product due to the production of carbonyl and peroxide radicals during the radiation and subsequent storage in the presence of oxygen. Although we can remove the product discoloration and rancidity problem by reducing the uh, reducing the radiation uh, pro, uh, means designing the radiation process in such a way that we can have uh, means we can uh, reduce the oxygen concentration and the temp uh, the, uh, the parameters that we performed at low temperature then this problem of discoloration and rancidity can be minimized. So, students what we learned from this lecture? Uh, food irradiation is a promising new food technology. It can reduce or eliminate several pathogenic disease causing microorganisms from uh, the food. Here in this process we use ionizing radiations which has the ability to sterilize the food products, reduce a significant number of microorganisms that are the public health concerns using medium doses of radiation, inhibition of sprouting, disinfestation of insect and delaying of ripening process using low doses and one most important thing we have to kept in our mind that uh, as per the labeling regulatory authority special labels are required on the all retail food products that undergo irradiation process. And, uh, now, I can conclude that this technology is increasing as it may provide a cheaper, more effective option for food manufacturers to ensure the microbiological safety of their products. Thank you. On that note, I would like to thank sir for this very enriching discussion and thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.